uh, back again to continue answering questions that Robert Z had asked us to answer on behalf of Kay, who is, I believe, a member of the VC that is uh, doesn't make videos. I'm not exactly sure what the situation is there. Uh, so anyway, the, there are four questions. I answered the first two in a video just moments before this one. The fourth question, I don't remember what it was off the top of my head now. And like I said, I checked Robert Z's video list feed and did not see those videos in there. And he, I guess they've been taken down. I'm not sure why. But the third question was to name some bands or singers that you feel are overrated and then to name some bands or singers that you feel are underrated. Well, I thought about the overrated and I had a, it was easy to make a list. I had a list of uh, five or six or so and because truth be told there's probably more music that I dislike or don't care for or flat out can't stand than there is music that I like in the grand scheme of things so I had the list of bands and people but then I thought you know I don't know someone likes them I mean otherwise they wouldn't be popular so I just don't listen to stuff I don't like, uh, you know, unless I'm stuck in the car with someone and they're playing the radio or something and don't worry about it. So I don't want to get into the bands I don't like. I, I don't have any problem talking about bands I don't like, but it's not in the mood for doing that today. So I figured it would be more fun or constructive to talk about the bands that I feel are uh, underrated. Yes, underrated. So, and this is going to come as no surprise to anyone who watches any of my videos, uh, especially since I did a huge series of reviewing every one of their albums, but number one underrated band, The Kinks. Everybody knows the hits, or at least everybody here does, I'm sure, but they're one of those bands where they're, uh, for reasons... Uh, too long to get into. They just never got the promotion and, and uh, recognition they deserved. Especially they were banned from playing in the United States for five years in the 60s so they missed out on the biggest part of the 60s which also was when they made their greatest ever records. So a lot of that stuff never got played in the US and they did have some hits in the US before and after and then again in the early 80s but the just an incredible the equal of, of any any band or group or singer out there in the history of uh, popular music or rock and roll or music in general in my opinion the you got the Beatles and then you got the Kinks and then you got everybody else in my opinion uh, there's there's all the hits there's Lola you really got me sunny afternoon great stuff but there's just so so much more and if you're not uh, don't check out the Kinks. It's like if you just uh, got the Beatles Blue album and never went any further. I mean, great stuff on there, but there's just so so much more to discover with the Beatles. The same with the Kinks. Uh, this is Arthur. In my opinion, this is the best album in 1969. 1968, they put out an album called Kinks of the Village Green Preservation Society. Best album of that year. Second best album of all time, in my opinion. Uh, just this would be actually be a great starting point if you don't know anything about the kinks past the hits but definitely one of the most criminally underrated bands ever and it's a shame because they're so good today's ray davies birthday by the way he's 71 the um other one since i only like pretty much older music with few few very very few exceptions but this is going to come as no surprise to anyone because i've been ranting and raving about this girl for a year or so, best album of last year, best album, in my opinion, the last 20, 30 years or so, Lydia Loveless, uh, somewhere else, she's got three albums out, all of them are really good, she's incredible, worth checking out, I don't know if you can say she's underrated, because she's, nobody really knows who she is too much, even though she has a little bit of a following, but, uh, yeah, <clears throat> someone said, um, on a message board, a uh, music message board that I visit every once in a while, what's your opinion of what, in your opinion, what's the best rock band of the 70s? Someone answered these guys, 
And, you know, it kind of makes sense. I really couldn't argue with that, even though they are definitely a soul and a funk band also. But, you know, they don't get... And they, they it's not like they're not known. And it's not like uh, hip-hop and rap songs have sampled these guys to death and all. So they're big and they're known, but they just were never as big as a lot of, uh, say, Sly and the Family Stone and... and uh, some of the other people, incredible band. Their first five or six albums are just top notch. Just uh, some of the best funk, soul, rock and roll you're ever gonna hear. And um, Eddie Hazel, the guitar player on the early albums. If you like your, uh, if you like your guitar players, if you like your uh, Jimi Hendrix, your Jimmy Page, your Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, this guy's right here with any one of them. Uh, better than several of them in my opinion incredible guitar player and just great weird funky swampy blues soul rock and roll uh, Detroit sounds incredible band that should have been more popular than they were and uh, this is their first album from 1970 like I said everything up through about 76 or so you can't go wrong okay Dexy's Midnight Runners, great band. Everyone knows Come On Eileen. I've talked about this before, worldwide hit. They had a couple of other hits in England, but they only had that one huge hit in America. Uh, it's one of those love it or hate it songs, or one of those songs that you've heard so much you don't care if you never hear it again, even if you liked it to begin with. I like the song. I think it's pretty cool, but it's not really indicative of their overall sound, their other stuff. And uh, so just a, a kind of a white soul rock and roll funk band from England. I don't know how to, uh, a new wave, 80s sounding in a very good way. The Come On Eileen's a good song. There's, there's just a ton more. They've got four albums, four studio albums. They've got a couple of live and uh, B-side type albums. But uh, every one of them's good. They even, they're that rare band that, they did three albums in the 80s, and then they broke up. They came back together, more or less, they, um, in, I think, 2012 or 13, and did a reunion album, which is, is actually a very good album. The, those things usually don't don't turn out so well. But, um, yeah. So, and I forgot one I'm going to have to grab, but let me do these two. Uh, Richard Thompson. Another one, if you if you like the guitar players, he's one of the best ones out there. Uh, just incredible guitar player. He was in a band called, uh, great songwriter too. Vocalist, he's okay. Uh, his wife, former wife, Linda Thompson, is a really great, uh, really good vocalist. They uh, don't work together anymore because they are split up. Uh, Richard Thompson was in Fairport Convention, was a very good band, and Fairport Convention... I think still going on, but he left it decades ago. It's one of those, like the Isley Brothers are still going, even though none of the original members are still in there. But Fairport Convention, any of those albums worth checking out. Then he went solo, and then he married his wife, Linda. They made albums together up through about 82. Uh, it's one of the best albums of the 80s, by the way. Shoot Out the Lights, 1982. And then he's made albums uh, solo on his own since... 82, and uh, some great stuff in his solo catalog, some hit and miss, but everything with Fairport Convention and everything he did with uh, Linda, his then wife, is is pretty much gold. This is worth checking out. If you don't, um, check out uh, Shoot Out the Lights, the title track on YouTube, if you want kind of a taste of what he is all about, and um, they're just an incredible guitarist great songwriter that is little little known or I guess people have heard of him but little little heralded and hold on because I forgot to get some oh figured I'd forget something I won't pull all this out. Anyway, the jam. Uh, 
another great band. They were in that mix with the Clash, the Sex Pistols, and the whole early punk rock new wave deal. They're around 77 to 82. Great band and uh, huge in England. Didn't do anything in America. I'm doing reviews of their albums in sequence right now. I did their first two albums. I need to get on to the rest of them. Just been lazy and haven't. Uh, I don't just, you know, if you love 60s music and you love Beatles, Kinks, Who, Small Faces, Yardbirds, uh, that sort of stuff, then you would love the Jam, who were a decade later, but, but, um, of equal quality and they don't sound like just an imitation of that stuff they have their own sound but anyway the jam definitely underrated so that's it I guess I don't remember like I said the fourth question I was trying to remember what it was there Robert but I, I don't I don't know and I think when I heard it it that's something that I didn't really have any response to anyway so 